Hello everybody, welcome to this Airbrush AI review. Today I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about Airbrush. And as always, if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. And I'll also be leaving a discount link in the description of this video so that you can always get your money's worth for Airbrush. So Airbrush is essentially a software, it's an AI art generation software and website that allows you to input text into a very easy me method in an input box and it will spit out any art, any, you know, AI generated um, art or pictures that you can then use for your creative purposes. So beginning with the dashboard, and I'm just going to take you through everything that this software has to offer. So we have our first slogan and our main body of text, which basically says that we can create any photo we want and we can have the option to create the image or search our gallery. We also have an on and off button for dark mode and light mode. We have our profile button that allows us to either create an image, how many credits we've got left and whether we need to log out or not and then you have a chat with us button and then here we have our recent generations now these are two that we've just previously done um, and we'll come back to them in a minute um, but we also have our sign out button we have a little support thing at the bottom left that you can use if you do require help with anything to do with the software and then up the left hand side we have upgrade an image upscaler a search gallery history create image and then dashboard as well so under dashboard, this is what we have. And then under create image is where we're able to create the image itself. So the image details is where you basically specify what you want it to do. Now you have two options. You have DALI 2, which generates and consumes nine credits, but you have stable diffusion, which generates and consumes one credit. So obviously one will allow you to use it 15 times, but with the free 15 credits that you're applied, you're only able to use DALI once. So we're gonna go ahead and do stable diffusion for the remaining five. But as you can see on the dashboard, this one here was created via DALI um, and it looks very, very realistic as opposed to the purple bear on a beach here which is the one that was created by Stable Diffusion. And you can instantly see where the difference between these is that one goes for something ultra realistic and the other one goes for something that, you know, is evidently not meant to be realistic and looks a bit more like a piece of artwork or a drawing or a painting or something like that rather than a real life photograph. So we're gonna begin with five different things on Stable Diffusion. So we're gonna begin with number one and we're going to put man looking into the gates of heaven. Something that we can all, you know, think about in our mind and we'll have a little look at what Stable Diffusion thinks its interpretation of this would be. So once it's loaded, it will generate the image and then you'll be able to download it once it has been created. You can also change the AI engine and the image dimensions as I've said. But the image dimensions, you can either go for a small one, a large one or an extra large. So here it has created one. We can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if I do hit thumbs up, it will give the feedback back. And as you can see, we have a man staring at some gates, which evidently have crosses on them to symbolize the gates to heaven. And then this, when it's completed, will appear here in our recent generations right there. We're gonna go ahead and create a few more so we get a real idea of what it would do. So we're gonna do a cat walking down a street and we're gonna generate that image as well. There we have it, we have a street and then we have a cat walking down it, very, very good looking, you know, really, really accurate, really realistic. And I think that it looks excellent. We'll try now one more and we'll do the Toronto skyline. Obviously, if you do decrease or increase it, it will use either half a credit, one credit or four credits. And there we have it, the Toronto skyline with the CN Tower standing tall and proud over the top of it. If we do a small one, as you can see, what this will do is with our remaining four credits that we've got, this will basically decrease it slightly. So if you go for the Toronto skyline one more time to just show you sort of the difference between lines large, medium, and small. This is what a small one looks like. Now that is definitely not the Toronto skyline, but if we try that one more time, we'll have a little look at what the small image dimensions will show us. There we have it. So we have obviously what I believe is body of water, probably Lake Ontario. And then we have obviously our city behind it with some, you know, foliage and stuff like that. So really, really easy to use. Um, and you can also use DALI 2. And depending on the size of this, we'll consume uh, either eight, nine or 10 credits. And then stable diffusion, just to quickly show you one more time, generates either 0 0.5, consumes one or consumes four for extra large. And as you can see, we have four credits left. And here are the two plans if you did want to get some more credits. Now under history, you're able to view all of your previously generated images that you have got instead of having to go back to the dashboard because some people may have ge generated, you know, a very large amount and won't have them all appear in the recent dashboard um, area. And this is where you can view almost every single one of them that you've got so far. And then there's just a download button or with this button here, 
you can choose to delete that image entirely. So as you can see, this is where they all are. And then these will obviously have different sort of um, different resolutions or different aspect ratios depending on what you've done so as you can see the one of the reasons why these aren't as much is because they just simply had less pixels to play with than say one of these ones as you can see if we did say the cat walking down the street on this one we'll do that one more time and we'll show you the difference between large and small we we'll use stable diffusion and do cat walking down the street and then we hit create image. What this would do is almost the exact same, but it would just make it, because it has less things to do, it obviously has a street and a cat in a much more simplified format. But if we then go for large again and hit create image, we are, we, unfortunately we've used all of our credits and we need to refill to continue. But as you can see, depending on what you do, large would be the one where you would go for if you wanted a more realistic image if you wanted a really realistic one you'd go for extra large and then small and so on and so forth now a search gallery is where you're able to find your best images and prompts in the public gallery where people have created them so please enter a description for the image we'll put just toronto one more time and hit search and what we have here is a load of things that people have already generated themselves with the prompt toronto so as you can see we've got some really 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 nice looking ones here We've got things with, you can see what is meant to be the CN Tower. Loads of them have the CN Tower here. This is a Toronto tourist guide with planet Mars as a head. You've got Toronto tourist guide with planet Mars as a head on Toronto. Toronto CN Tower painting by Jeremy Mann. Um, Toronto tourist guide with planet Mars as a head on Toronto. Loads of different stuff here. Um, that you've got. So this is like a sort of looking up at the CN Tower. This is obviously the CN Tower and then the Skypod. And I really, really like how this overall works. This one here, as you can see, you can import things like this as well in order to create your AI things. You can put stuff like Blender 3D, Unreal Engine, 8K, by a specific artist and two different artists if you want it to, and it will know what type of art to create via these inputs. Under here, you have an aerial photography of a city burning and loads and loads of different stuff so if we do one more thing and we put say london in it will come up with loads of different things of london so we've got a london bus outside big ben you've got big ben there you've got loads obviously big ben is pretty much the main thing that people will know when they think about london but you've got loads of different things here loads of different styles you've got this one uh, london eye on fire stuff like that you've got um autumn in london in the year 3000 obviously people have really really gone in on what they've actually described here this is a very very large prompt but you can put the most simple prompt or you can put a really large prompt with loads of different things that you want to feed the image and that will still come up which i think is really really cool and then finally under image upscaler you're able to clarify as you can see sharpen and upscale a photo without losing its content and defining characteristics so all you would then need to do is input the url of an image so if we go ahead and get an image off the internet quickly so I've gone ahead and just done a very simple Google image as you can see and it will upscale it slightly. We've done a blurry Google logo so it won't obviously make it completely visible. It's not magic but what it does is if there are any blurry points it will make it look slightly better. So you would simply just import the URL in here, hit submit and after a while the image will upscale and then it will appear in this box here. So here we are when you've imported it. I did just have to change it to something that we've got here. But as you can see, it's somebody looking at the Google logo. And essentially what this then has done is it's just increased the overall quality of the image. So it's made it a higher resolution. It's made it look better. As you can see, it's not lost any content or defining characteristics. We obviously have the original photo that we used just here. And then it's very, very simple. It's just able to make it look a little bit better. So if you do have anything that, you know, doesn't look perfect or is a little bit blurry then this feature is able to then upscale that and it's the same thing for any of the images that they've actually got on it you're able to also import them and then they're able to obviously upscale and look a lot better than they originally did but that is more or less it for airbrush so now what do i think about airbrush and would i recommend it and the answer to two of those is yes and i really really like it now airbrush is a very very simplistic thing but i really like its incorporation of two different you know ai engines a lot of them only have one obviously you have to go to the main website for dali if you want to use theirs or there's other ones like mid journey and stuff like that but this basically incorporates two into the same program so you're not limited to what one that you have to use which is a really good 
good feature. I also like its very thoughtful implementation of the image upscaling option and the able, uh, you know, the option to search through gallery and get inspiration before you spend the credits that you've got. Um, and I also just like the able, the ability to have all of your recent stuff on the dashboard along with everything that you've previously created in the history tab as well. And then the little, you know, option for dark mode and light mode is always a really nice touch in any software. I know some softwares, uh, you know, really very well established and still do not have dark mode and light mode when it's such an easy thing to implement. So that's something I have to say really well done for Airbrush for doing. And overall, as you know, as an AI image generator and upscaler, I think that it's an absolutely excellent piece of software and I would highly recommend it to anyone looking to create AI generated art. Thank you everyone so much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.